All right, so I've been doing some research, you know, uh, looking up all the statistics and going into the lab to figure out what are the best heroes right now, just for you guys. But yeah, I've been really looking at the Shenju Major a lot. A lot of great teams are playing right now in the qualifiers, and it's been interesting to watch, as well as a lot of high MMR pubs. If you guys have been as fortunate as I am to watch these five versus five pro stacks, it's been a ton of fun, and I think it gives a lot of awesome information onto what you should be drafting or picking because certain heroes just happen to be better than others. So let's talk about some of the new popular heroes that are being picked a lot by pros and that should be picked in your pubs as well by you. This pro guide you're about to see is one of hundreds just like it over at GameLeap.com. GameLeap is your number one stop to become a specialist in your desired role fast. Check us out today with the discount link in the description below to unlock your hidden potential. But for now, let's hop into the video. First off is Phantom Lancer Safe Lane. And this one I really want to stress to every carry player because I've been doing a lot of coaching for carry players in particular. I think I have by far the most carry coaching students. And the reason why I say this is I've noticed a large trend of what has actually helped them to become successful. And I'm happy to kind of give you my lowdown. So first off, if you are struggling in your bracket and you're confused as a carry player, what you need to do to get better. You need to simplify the process and PL is very good at this. So you might be like, what does this have to do with the video speed? It's very important because I think it's why PL can be great in pubs and I recommend him to you. PL naturally is a hero that is not cooldown reliant and simply just has a very hard three item spike. So if you can get to that three item spike like a lot of pros do, then you'll notice a lot of success. All you have to do is avoid fights for as long as possible and then simply carry the game for your team. Obviously there's some complex things about this. There are situations where pros will take fights, but in the sake of learning, if you really want to get down the basis of farming and understanding the carry role, I highly recommend you listen to me and make sure you get your three item timing. And this is where you should go. Yasha, into Diffusal, into Manta, into Heart. And once you have your Heart, you're going to possibly be the strongest hero on the map depending on the timing you get it. And yeah, a lot of pros are picking PL right now. He's been getting overlooked, in my opinion, for a while. He's gotten quite a few buffs over quite some patches. In general, I think this hero always kind of makes a random resurgence into the meta. As people realize his carry potential has not faded, he's still one of the best safeling heroes in the late game and will carry your games, especially in the pubs that go 30 to 40 minutes very reliably. Next up on this list is Abaddon Offlane. I think I might have talked about this hero a little bit uh, within a recent video, but why is he so good right now? It is almost impossible to lane a melee hero against Abaddon. Even something like a Faceless Void who is notoriously- It's so hard to trade with Void in lane because he has Time Walk and Bash, which are low committal great trading spells. Abaddon just levels up Curse of the Avernus, silences him, and gets an attack speed buff for everything around him. It is insane, super hard to trade with. Not only that, like in the offlane you have so many good options. This is what I love about this hero. If you really spam him, you begin to understand the unbelievable amount of options he has. Does your lane stink? Are you in a, against a tri lane? Simply take the point in your queue that allows you to damage yourself and deny yourself, and you can avoid feeding first blood, you can avoid feeding a lot of kills, and you can even use it to secure CS to make sure you get some items. Does the enemy lane have something you need to purge, like an ember spirit chains, or more realistically, like a, a dazzle poison touch? You can level your shield and purge that off. Are they a melee hero, right? Then you level your curse of the Avernus. These options allow for a really versatile offlane hero that can be picked early into the draft. And the best and final point why I think this hero is so good is because even if you don't get that farm, which sometimes I notice a lot of offlane players, they get too caught up in fighting so they don't actually get items, which could be a, a problem you could maybe look into yourself if you're an offlane player. But regardless of Abaddon's items, as long as you have a maxed out aphotic shield, you're going to be able to have insane impact in the team fights. Oh, and finally, uh, Curse of the Avernus. If you win a single team fight, you just like shred towers. It's crazy. <laughs> it works on towers if you didn't know. It's really good. Next up on the list is a very popular five nowadays. Um, in fact, I've been playing a bit of competitive Dota myself and I was shocked. It got picked uh, against one of my teams first, and I didn't know what to think because for a while I'm like, oh, you just counter it. Right? But actually, now that I've come to realize, I don't know what Undying 5 necessarily loses to in lane. When you put him in the safe lane, it's very hard to trade with him early on. Decay is just like the best or one of the best level 1 spells in the game for just strictly trading. So if you're looking to just win MMR as a 5, 
I recommend you play like 20 games of Undying, and I know you're like, Speed, that's boring. I'm giving my tip. <laughs> and I, I, I really believe in this hero. It's level 2 spike of Soul Rip plus Decay is super hard to lane against. You can sustain any carry, and your team fighting potential, which is a big deal in low MMR games, as team fights are very committal and people just straight up commit to them. There, there's very little disengaging, to be frank. Tombstone is just broken. It, it just adds up. No one can move. You pop your ultimate, you walk in, and you can just tank all the spells for your team. It's really good in the lane, and it's great in team fights. I think it's genuinely an amazing pup hero. Next up on the list is DP mid lane, uh, and if you don't know what DP is, it is Death Prophet. Now, why is Death Prophet good? I think the hero just does a lot of damage. Once again, I've said this in the past, and I still think it applies very heavily and something you consider for other heroes as well uh, when you're looking for niche picks for yourself in the future, maybe something that's off meta. But Death Prophet does a lot of damage. And it's very odd to play against. If you haven't played against Death Prophet in the last 100 games, which is probably, or maybe I should say 20 or 50, it's probably realistic that you have not played against Death Prophet recently. And when you haven't played against a hero recently that does an exorbitant amount of damage, you quickly realize that you're dying at rapid paces that you did not understand were even slightly possible. Not only that, I think her formula is really nice. Because as of late, I've noticed that um, a lot of mid laners and off laners take in the role. Uh, especially in these lower mirror games of strictly just fighting. It's a common trend uh, within a lot of players if they're not playing like an Alka or Medusa mid lane, if they're playing like a Pugna, DK, or DP, then they're consistently just running around. And why I like DP for that is she's extremely good at fighting in the early game, right? Your Spirit Siphon and Nuke, as well as your Silence, makes it very hard to fight into. But then put on top of that your ultimate and... As long as you get your stuff off, you're going to kill everyone half the time. I mean, I guess you have to be careful of an AA. <laughs> but if you position correctly and get your, your spells off, you're going to also take the towers, which I like. It's, it's a nice formula. So listen to this. In solo queue, things are hectic, right? So wouldn't it be nice if there's a formula? Yes, for DP, I can give you a very brief formula. If you don't have your ultimate, clear as many creep waves as possible. And I'm specifically saying creep waves, right? You don't want to jungle too much on this hero. It's not very effective. So you want to push in creep waves. That's going to keep your farm up in the downtime. And then when you have your ultimate up, I recommend you either smoke with your team or simply just run to a lane and try to take a tower. Now, if you think it's a bit dangerous or you're dying doing it, you can take a step back, you can farm up an axe, and you do scale well late into the game. That's the nice part. But if you follow that general formula of simply nuke out waves, buy clarities, and focus on your farm without your ultimate, and then when you have your ultimate, go push a tower or look for a fight, I think you'll have some success. Next up is a four hero that is very, very popular right now. It is unbelievably reliable, and I think it's great in pubs for a couple of reasons, and that is Lena 4. Why? Well, first off, this hero is one of the best first picks in the game. You can first face it, no problem. Why? Because it can play two roles. It can play mid, which is a core role, and support. So if this is captain's mode or you're playing with your friends, or even if you just want to hide your mid laner's picks or, or bait something out, you can pick the Lena right away, right? And the enemy team won't know if it's a support or if it's a mid laner. And let's say you want to put it mid, you can even swap. There's a lot of high MMR players that I've seen doing this in their pubs, where they pick something like a Lena or a Leshrac at, with a support player and then swap it to the mid lane to catch the enemy team off guard. But most importantly, why is this hero such a good four? I think it's just because of its potent laning stage and ability to have impact, regardless of, you know, its relative farm and what the structure of the game looks like. Lena has two nukes and a stun. When is that not good? <laughs> like... What is that not good? It's just good. Combine that with a, a solid laning stage, you just have a well-rounded hero, which is what I think Lena is. She's well-rounded. You push out creep waves, which is something I'm trying to really incentivize for everyone. Push out creep waves, it keeps your farm up, even as a support, it's very important. You can get a very early Aether Lens, you can get an Ags and one-shot certain people, it's, it's quite comical, and you can dominate the laning stage. This is a, an amazing combo for a hero. So yeah, give her a shot. And I think if you play her enough, you'll come to realize like why you destroy people in lane if you simply take your stun and then your passive. It's super strong. Next up, we have Pudge in the off lane. Pudge is so good. Like, he's so good. It's crazy to me. All you have to do is buy tanky items. Please hear me out on this one. Stop buying Aether Lens and an early blink on Pudge. Sometimes blink first on Pudge can be justified. Aether Lens, no. It is much easier if you simply play Pudge in the regard of being tanky and playing around rot and frontlining and tanking spells. It is super effective. You're one of the hardest heroes to kill in the game. And that can even include the landing stage. If they don't have an ample amount of physical damage that can, you know, take advantage of your zero armor. If you take Flesh Sheep at level 1 and buy a Quelling Blade, you have like you know, close to 90 damage. It's easy to last hit, easy to deny. And then all you have to do is rock creep waves and run at people. 
and he's fun to play, but he also scales crazy well. I actually think Pudge is like a top three scaling offlaner. I, honestly, I don't even know what else contests him, to be honest. He becomes like a hyper carry in the late game because he's impossible to kill and just disrupts your backline with no fear. His talents are unbelievably good if you looked at all of them. The, the ones in the late game, if either the, the six second dismember with a BKP is just crazy lockdown or extra flesh heap makes him a great late game core, which synergizes with the points that I'm trying to say about him scaling well, which is once again a good uh, thing to have in, in solo queue or even, you know, just Dota in general, I think is a nice thing to have when games go later, typically nowadays. And finally, just based on stats, not that I, I'm a big stat guy, but Pudge has a very good win rate. In fact, according to Dota buff, he has a 54% win rate. 54%. That's really high. Like, really, really high. In fact, once again, I don't know too much about stats, and I'm not trying to go solely based off stats. But like, Zeus is one of the only high heroes that's higher, who I'd also recommend but isn't in this video. It's a really high number, and I think for good reason. And finally, just uh, what items to buy, I recommend buying Pipe, I recommend buying Crimson, Atos is not bad as it gives you pretty solid stats, Shiva's, BKB, these items are great. And finally, to top off the list, and I know this is going to pain a lot of people, but yes, I've been watching the Major, and teams are still, and top tier teams are still picking Enchantress in the offlane. This hero is not dead, trust me, it is not dead. Your heal is still good enough to sustain the lane. You still crush a lot of lanes. Your damage has not been severely reduced. It was reduced by four, which is noticeable, but not that noticeable. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. You still hit pretty hard. And when you get impetus, you still shred people. The thing is you have maintained the ability to become a frontliner who is quite dominant in lane and enables the position four role. And what I mean by that is you can pick an Earthshaker, an Earth Spirit. These heroes that are typically harder to lane nowadays because they don't necessarily provide that much directly in the laning stage unless they're dragging waves, which any hero can do. Enchantress enables them because she can solo lane effectively. And still, that is a very effective tool to have. Plus, I don't even recommend you always do this. Uh, something that I've, I've seen and I think is even better to implement and easier to implement is picking something like an Enchantress Pugna lane where you have Pugna as a four. Just cast another blast and just auto attack with Enchantress and Pugna. It is gross. It is gross. Also, you can push tower super effectively, which Ench doesn't necessarily lack, but isn't always the fastest at, right? Sometimes she'll just have to sit at the tier two for like five minutes. Pugna speeds that up very heavily, so I think that combo is good. Quick hot take. That's a, that's a hotter take. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of, of seven heroes you should be considering in your pubs. Once again, I really like looking at trends and what's popular, and it, it's one of the things that really helped me gain MMR when I was learning the game of Dota, because it's also very important to have confidence in your hero and believe that they're good, and I, I genuinely believe that they're good, so hopefully maybe you do too. <laughs> Thanks for watching, hopefully I'll see you in the next one, and please do like and subscribe. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.